Hello everyone! In today's video we are going to be talking all about Auras. Auras are not a part of the core foundry, however there are a few modules you can add in to bring them into your game. We're going to start off with the visuals that you can add in, and then we're going to move into how to automate them and have it set up so that Auras can actually provide a bonus to any allies, or potentially a detriment to enemies that are within the range of the player character. Let's get started with the simple parts first and then move on as we go through the video. So the simplest way to create a visual for the aura is using the token aura module. By doing this, when you go to settings and then go to image, at the very bottom you will now have the option to add in an aura for the character. You can change the color as desired and change the number of units that are going to be used. Let's go ahead and add in this green aura here. And we can go ahead and look at our ruler tool, measuring from the player. We can go out 15 feet here, 15 feet here, and 15 feet here. So this is the easiest way to create a visual to actually show where the aura is affecting on the map. Let's take a look at one more way we can create a different visual and then move into how we can automate it. So the next thing I've done is I brought in a tile. This is a tile that is an animated asset provided by JV2A. You could also, though, have it set up to be a template just as easily. You could be animated or still. It doesn't really matter as long as it is either a template or a tile. We cannot, unfortunately, use tokens at this time using this particular method. After you have whatever you want on the scene, we're going to attach it to our character which will show the range of the aura in the same way, but it does require a few more steps. All right, let's go ahead and select our character, click the token, click the link icon on the left-hand side. If we see the token image pop up here, we are doing the right thing. We need to now go over to the tool. If it's a tile, go to the tile tool. If it's a template, go to the template tool. Click the template or tile, click attach, and we should see selected objects attached to token. You could use this not only for auras, but also for uh, you know steeds or for wagons. This same tool can be used for a number of different things, but today we're focusing on the aura element. To, set, to test that it works, let's click our character and move, and we can see they move together. In order to have these auras now automated, there are a few modules you will need. You will need dynamic active effects, MIDI QOL, Active Auras, as well as the Dynamic Active Effects SRD is pretty helpful so that you can follow along and see what else you can add in. Additionally, if you have never used Dynamic Active Effects before, there are a few things you need to configure in the settings. I'll be putting a link down below where you can find these settings that you will need, since I'm not going to go through all of that in this video today. After you've installed all of the modules you need and you've configured the settings in the way that is required for using anything related to dynamic active effects, you're going to go into your compendium, look for the already pre-made ones so you can see how they function to start off and then later on we'll be editing those. We can take a look at them here, but because they're in the compendium we can't actually edit it, so we need to import them into our game and then go to our items tab. And if we take a look at what it is doing, everything is the same as you would experience with dynamic active effects. Um, right here, bonus ability save, adding in, plus add abilities .charisma modifier. The only thing that has changed is there is now a new tab here for aura. Effect is an aura, check the box, who it targets, allies, what is the radius, and do you want to ignore self? Click check. And everything else is pretty much okay here. We can just submit changes and bring it in to our character and then see what it does from there. By default, when you bring an effect in, any of these ones, it'll automatically have the effect underneath your effects tab. We can see here, or a protection. Now I have made one small change and that is I have added in a token magic effect to this so that I can see a visual representation that it is affecting an ally. You can see that right here, macro.tokenmagic custom glow. Again, you could change this in any way you wanted to and add in lots of different effects in the same way you use dynamic active effects, but now it's an aura. 
Having set all of that up, we can see that my character token is now glowing because I have ignore self not set. And we have our acolyte here, which I have set to be friendly. Right now the acolyte is outside of the aura, so nothing is happening. But as soon as my acolyte steps within the aura's effect range, we can see that they are now glowing. And if we were to also try, we would see that they would receive that same bonus of the plus two. And we can see that visibly here underneath Aura of Protection. I'm going to show you one thing that I have set up, which is a way to determine which token the Aura should be applied to based on the name of the token. Let's go ahead and see how we can use that. And maybe we can talk about some use cases afterwards. So this is the macro I'm using today. I've named it Detect Magic, but you can change it to whatever name is best for you. I'll be putting a link down in the description below to where you can find it very easily. What it does, as previously mentioned, it will look and see what the name of a token is. And if that name matches the name that you give it as an argument, it will apply a token magic effect. Today I'm using the glow effect, but if you change everything here within the set of brackets, you can change it to a different effect very easily. So if I were just to copy everything here, and put it in, it would use the evil aura effect instead. So look at the macros in, that are brought in via token magic and just see if you want to, you know, use a burning effect or a transformation effect. Anything will work for this. Let's go ahead and set it up. And the first thing we need to do is we are going to create an effect on our token. So once again, we have our aura. We are going to go into effects, edit it. We want to have macro execute custom detect magic. We don't need to add in the arguments yet. We're going to do that after we bring it onto the character. You will see an error there. That's okay. We're going to go into effects right now. Edit. Effects. Add in at token. And then the name of the token you want to look for. In my case, it is magic, but it could be whatever you want and then submit changes. At this point, after it's set up, all you need to do to toggle it on and off is right click, toggle effect. Let's go ahead and see how this works by bringing in a bunch of different actors all named magic and see if they light up when they are near my character. So I've set up an actor with a wildcard token image. All of the images I'm pulling come from Forgotten Adventures. And let's just bring them all onto the scene right now. And as we see, if I put them close to my token, they are going to glow. If I put them far away, they are not going to glow. Let's drag out a few more and then have my character walk around. So right now, because all of the images are named magic, all the tokens are named magic, whenever my character gets close to one, they're going to glow like so. But if I were to have an actor on the scene that was not named Magic, and if I were to actually change the name of one of these, let's change this to Magic 1. And if I walk away and walk towards it again, it is not going to glow. That's where we're going to be wrapping things up for today. But before I do, just a quick note. Credit goes out to Kendashi from the Foundry community, both for creating the Active Auras module, as well as while I was making this video, he helped me out quite a bit in creating the macro I wanted to use, as well as to understand how the module operated. All right, I will be putting links down below to everything we talked about today, as far as the macros and the modules. If you have any questions though, please let me know down in the comments below.